Let me say first off that my heart is broken for the people of Uvalde, those parents who lost children, those loved ones, all those friends, neighbors who are suffering. You know, I'm reminded of the words of Abraham Lincoln when he said to Mrs. Bixby, who had lost five sons in war, how weak and fruitless any words of his must be to try to comfort her. And it's the same here. I can't imagine the horror, the tragedy, having your child go off to school and then see them no more alive. Breaks my heart, absolutely. And when I heard about it, I shed tears. I did. When I look at my own grandchildren, my grandchildren are about that age. And I can't help but think, what if it was one of mine? How heartbroken I would be. The pain that would be in my household today. The pain that's in those households right now. So I paused, I took a breath, and I said a prayer. Because that's what we need right now. That's what those families need right now. They need comfort. They need strength. They need wisdom. They need someone who actually cares about what they are going through. And that's what we need to give them. But you know, when I look at my grandchildren, I am also reminded of why I am a law-abiding, armed, patriotic American. I'm reminded of why I believe in the premise of our Second Amendment when I look at those babies. I'm reminded why our framers put it in our Constitution that in this nation, you are not the second responder, you are the first responder. And that you have an absolute duty and a right to stand up and protect your home from any enemy, foreign or domestic. And so, I am here today, much to the chagrin of many of the leftists back home in my state, who thought I should cower and stay home and not come here and continue to protect that right for those law-abiding citizens back home in North Carolina and for the law-abiding citizens of this nation. Because here it is. Here it is. Everybody says, what do we do? What do we do? How do we stop this? What do we do? The answer is not simple, but there is a simple starting point. And here it is. Secure our schools. Stop waffling and wavering and acting confused that you don't understand what the problem is. You have defunded the police, de derided the police, and you have left our schools as soft targets. And you continue to do so, and as such, we need to defend and secure our schools. We need to make as much of an investment in securing our children as we do our airports. We need to make as much of an investment in securing our children as we do our banks and our money. And hear me when I say this leftist politicians in Washington, D.C. We need to make as much of an invested investment protecting our children as the American people do in protecting you. You spare no expense buying every weapon known to man by every metal detector known to man, every modern convenience you have it at your disposal to protect you behind the walls that you live in. But you are bound and determined to leave our children defenseless. And now you are bound and determined to, to leave the law-abiding patriotic citizens of this nation unarmed and defenseless. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, Get your pencils out, lick them, and get ready to write this down. 
It is not going to happen. We are not going to go off into that good night without standing up for our rights. It's time for the law-abiding American patriot in this nation to stand up and say, hell no, we will not go and you will not take them and we will continue to stand strong for what we know is right. We will protect ourselves. We will protect our children. And we will protect the freedoms that God has given us and that has been enshrined in our Constitution. We will not lay down. You hear me when I say this. Hear me when I say this, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and any other leftist, communist, Marxist out there. What I need for you to do is do this. I need for you to take these two fingers, stick them in your ears, and clean the stuff out of them. And hear us all as we say in unison, shall not be infringed, will not be infringed. We will not allow you to strip us of our rights so that you can bring us to our knees because we know what your machinations are. See, we've seen this movie before. We've seen it. We saw it in a place called Russia. We saw it in a place called Germany. We saw it in a place called China. We saw it in a place called Cambodia and Vietnam. And we saw it most recently in a place called Venezuela. When the people are disarmed and the government have all the guns and all the power, they always become despotic. Well, not in this nation. You will not tap dance on the graves of these children to disarm the people of this nation. In fact, if you put as much energy into doing that as you do with that political tap dance into securing these schools and shoring them up and stop making excuses. Mike could make a dent on this. So guys, here's what I'm gonna leave with you today. Don't be afraid. When the newspaper asked me before I left home, was I coming to the NRA convention? My answer was yes. And the reason why I was going was to defend the rights of law-abiding citizens in my state and across this nation. Because guys, it's time for us to stand up and push back. The lies that have been told and continue to be told are not only threatening to strip our rights away from us, they are literally causing life to be lost on the streets. See down in Uvalde, Beto O'Rourke didn't care about those children. He was willing to spit, on, spit in their faces for political purposes. The news media, the news media stands silent Children are killed in Chicago at genocidal rates. They stand silent. But as soon as they take a chance, as soon as they see a chance, take a shot at their political enemies. They're Johnny on the spot and they're right there ready to do it. Well, we need to be bold. We need to stand up because on this side, we have the solutions. And it's time for us to start pushing those solutions. And it starts with protecting our children in our schools. Time for messing around is over, folks. And the time for blaming law-abiding citizens should have never begun. It is time to put the blame where it goes, which is at the shooter's feet. And it's time to look towards those ineffective elected officials who refuse to move and do the right thing, but instead take the easy way out. If any way out, it needs to be them out of office. We need to replace them with some law-abiding folks that are going to stand up for us. So guys, don't be weary in well-doing and do not be afraid to stand up for what's right. Because what we're standing up for indeed is right. Stand strong, stand brave, stand, stand proud. Do not back down and never forget, shall not be in friends. That is our motto and that's what we will fight for. God bless you all. God bless Texas, God bless North Carolina, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.
good. Pretty good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this time is my honor to invite the founders of Midway USA, Larry and Brenda Potterfield, and their two grandchildren, two of their grandchildren, Jay and Eliza, to the stage. In ninth. Here they go. In 1992, to serve as a conduit to help support and fight for our Second Amendment rights, the Potterfields in Midway USA created the Roundup program. Many of you are familiar with this program and probably have participated in it. This program gives Midway USA customers the option at checkout to round up their purchases to the next dollar. The roundup amount is then donated to Isla for the fight. And I'm proud to announce that this 30-year program has now donated over $20 million to Isla. All of it to help Isla fight for our mission of protecting and defending the Second Amendment in the states, capitals, and courts throughout our country. On behalf of Isla, it is my great pleasure to sincerely thank Larry, Brenda, all of the employees at Midway USA, and all of the customers who have contributed to this extremely successful and important program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. We're going to take a short, very short break while we uh, change out a little bit of television.